All right, welcome to Stories of Divine Providence, and boy, do I have a great story for you today. So, in the early 20th century, there were two brothers named Isidore and Nathan Strauss. Of course, they were both Jewish, and they were quite rich and some of the most respected, most famous people in all of America. They owned A&S and Macy's, which made them multimillionaires. And uh, both were huge philanthropists. Uh, in particular, Nathan Strauss dedicated his time to pushing uh, pasteurization of milk, making it mandatory, which actually ended up saving thousands of people's lives. And in 1912, the two brothers decided to take a, a tour of Europe. They took their wives. They saw all the beautiful theaters and all the beautiful palaces and wonderful things in Europe. And one day, Nathan Strauss turns to his brother, Isidore, and says, why don't we tour Palestine? And his brother says, Palestine? It's like a fourth world country. Why would you want to go there? Well, Nathan said, first of all, I mean, we, we made all those donations. They had given money uh, to different health organizations. So why don't we check out, you know, what, we, what we've given? And secondly, I mean, Nathan was a Zionist, an ardent Zionist. When we're Jewish, don't we want to show a little support for our Jewish brothers? And so he convinced his brother, and they went, and they traveled, and they visited some of the institutions, and they saw a lot of yeshivas and hovels, and they toured all of Israel. And at a certain point, Isidore turns to Nathan and says, Okay, listen, how many camels can a person see? He saw the country. Let's go home. Let's go back to America. But Nathan he just felt deep inside that there was more to see, more to help, more to do. And he saw all the disease, all the hunger. And he felt like he could use his creativity and his money to help. So he said, no, I need to keep traveling. There's more to see here in Palestine. So his brother and his wife bid them farewell. They went back to Europe. And this continued for a little while until one day, Isidore sent Nathan an urgent telegram. He said, Nathan, come back now. Because they had a boat, and Isidore had already booked his brother a ticket, and they had a bus, a boat back to America where they belonged. But Nathan just couldn't bring himself to do it. He said, there's still so much of the country to give to. to. He, had, he was already negotiating all different ideas of contrib contributing to the fledgling country. And so he waited, he hesitated. The last moment, and he, he went back. And it was April 12th, and just a few hours late, he missed the boat. And he felt terrible until he found out that the boat that he had missed, the Titanic, unfortunately, and as we all know, went down under. Poor Isidore and his wife Riff had passed away, Isidore refused to go before the women, and the women, his wife, refused to go without her husband, Isidore, and they both passed away together on that sad day. Nathan Strauss heard about the terrible tragedy, and in his mourning, he knew that he had escaped, he had escaped the brush with death, and he went back, running through Palestine, through Israel, with more vigor, with more zeal, with more ideas, breakneck speed, giving and giving and giving. We know, of course, Netanya is named after Nathan Strauss. That was one of the cities that he helped found and helped give towards. And I have the merit to, every Shabbat, go on the Nathan Strauss roof in the old city of Jerusalem, which was donated by Nathan Strauss so that Jews could have access to go to the Western Wall. It wasn't always so safe. It was also a soup kitchen so both Jews and Arabs could, who were impoverished could eat. And um, amazingly, to this day, it's used as a place of kindness, of chesed. The Kotel gives out Kiddush. If you've ever gone up for the Kiddush, they give out a lot of good kugel and pickles and a lot of l'chaims. And on Shabbat mornings, I get to hang out there and share Debrei Torah and sometimes give some extra l'chaims and kugels at the, and, and some words of Torah. And I love to tell people this story. At this place was given by Nathan Strauss, the man whose name is Nun Tuf Nun, to give the man who knew that by giving, you get the man whose life was saved through giving. And he gave his life to 
giving towards the land of Israel. So the next time we have an opportunity to give, we should know that that is actually what's giving us life. And that's what's giving us joy. So may Nathan Strauss' memory be blessed. And may we be blessed to always be givers. Have a beautiful day.